On a sunlit day such as today, and during the noon hour, the streets of our city, like those of your cities, are filled with men and women who for a few moments leave the confines of the office building and engage in that universal delight we call window shopping. On occasion, I too am a participant. One Wednesday, I stood in front of the elegant show window of a prestigious furniture store and was impressed. That which attracted my attention was not the beautiful overstuffed set in the window, nor the comfortable appearing chair which was next to it, nor was it the beautiful chandelier overhead. Rather, my attention was directed to a little sign that the manager had placed in the bottom right-hand corner of the window. Its message was very brief. Finishers wanted. The store had need of those individuals who had the capacity and the skill to make ready for final sale the furniture which the firm produced. I went back to the office, but I could not get from my mind those words, finishers wanted. I realized that in life as well as in business, there has always been a need for those persons who could appropriately be called finishers. Their ranks are few, their opportunities are many, their contributions great. Actually, you and I have the opportunity to make such a choice, for each one of us must run the race called mortality and must make the decision, shall I falter or shall I finish? On the outcome of that question, Rest joy and happiness in this life and eternal life in the world to come. I'm so grateful that the Lord has not left us alone to make that decision. Rather, he has given to you and to me the accounts in the Holy Bible, which if we will but learn from those examples, we shall find that they are like a light to our feet as we run the race. As we read the experience of others, we honor those who finish. We sympathize with those who falter. It was the Apostle Paul who declared, Know ye not that they which run in the race run all, but one receiveth the prize, so run that ye might obtain. And before the words of Paul were ever spoken to his listeners, the son of David, King in all Israel declared that the race goeth not to the swift, nor the battle to the strong. Lust for power, greed for gold, and disdain for honor have ever appeared as faces of failure on the panorama of life. Captivated by their artificial allurement, many men stumble and falter and fail to finish the race. Whittier's words seem so appropriate concerning the same. Of all sad words of tongue or pen, the saddest are these, it might have been. But let us turn from those who faltered and talk for a minute about those who finished. First, I'd like to suggest that every true finisher has the mark of vision it has been said that history turns on small hinges, and so do people's lives. We're constantly making small decisions, the accumulation of which determines our happiness or our sorrow. The true finisher has the capacity to visualize his objective, to plan for it, and be ready when the moment of decision comes. Second, could I suggest the mark of effort? Vision without effort is daydreaming, and effort without vision is drudgery. But vision, coupled with effort, will win the prize. Needed is that capacity to make the second effort when the problems of life lay us low. We need the capacity to stick to your task till it sticks to you. Beginners are many, but enders are few. Honor, power, place, and praise. 
will come in the time of the one who stays. Stick to your task till it sticks to you. Bend at it, sweat at it, smile at it too. For out of the bend and the sweat and the smile will come life's victories after a while. Third, may I suggest the mark of faith. It was the psalmist who declared, It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in princes. Faith and doubt cannot exist in the same mind at the same time, for one will dispel the other. Fourth, I would choose to name the mark of virtue. Let virtue garnish thy thoughts unceasingly, said the Lord, and virtue will provide staying power in the race of life. Fifth, I would name the mark of courage. Courage becomes an attractive virtue when it is regarded not so much as a willingness to die manfully as the, well, the determination to live decently. Could I urge each one of us to have the courage to dream the impossible dream, to fight the unbeatable foe, to bear with unbearable sorrow, to run where the brave dare not go, to right the unrightable wrong, to love pure and chaste from afar, and to try when our arms are too weary to reach the unreachable star, and we will thus becoming a finisher. Finally, I enumerate the mark of prayer. When life's troubles confront us, when we experience the test of our faith, when the light of hope flickers ever so dimly and burns so low, the ability to communicate with our Maker will provide peace. These then are the marks of the true finisher. They can help you, they can help me, they can be a compass to our lives. Ever beckoning us onward and lifting us upward is he who declared, come, follow me. And sometimes that help comes ever so silently and on other occasions with dramatic impact. I think that once again today, I may walk by that furniture store in our city and take a long look at that little sign in the window and contemplate the true meaning of its message, Finishers Wanted. For my prayer is that you and I may be finishers in the race of life, 